Hello, this is Mark from ExcelOffTheGrid.com. In this video, we're looking at how we can create Sankey diagrams in Excel. This video is going to be slightly different to normal because rather than taking a start position and working through step by step to get to the final position, I'm going to talk you through a final template and how we make it. So that means it's a really good idea to get the example file and you can get that by following the links in the descriptions box below. So once you've done that, if you're ready, let's get started. Before we go any further, I would just like to remind you to subscribe and get notifications so that you don't miss any future videos. Sankey diagrams are a type of chart which display flow and the width of each element displays the rate of that flow. Now, while they're often used to display energy usage and how that flows, in this case, because I'm a finance guy, I've decided to look at cash flows. So here on the left, you can see we have four different kinds of cash inflow. We have a salary for Dave, a salary for Julie, some rental income and some dividends. And then on the right, we can see where that cash flows to as expenditure. So they spend money on their home, their cars, their food, and they also save some money. And the width of each one of those lines demonstrates how much of that cash flows into each one of those categories. While I'd like to leave the secret of how this chart is constructed until the end, I think it will help us understand the template if I display this now. So this is the secret. What you see before you that looks like one chart isn't one chart. It's actually 21 charts, and all of those have been laid on top of each other. So if I go up here in the home menu to find and select, and then choose the selection pane, you'll see that we have a group with a chart called Sankey End Chart, one called Sankey Start Chart, and then 19 other charts. And these are all used to create this one effect. If I click inside this group and move one of those, for example, you see that that chart there is purely one of those lines. So each one of those lines is a separate stacked area chart. I control Z to move that back. So now you've seen the secret with the charts, I'm now going to talk you through all of the calculations we use to enable this to happen. So we're going to start up here in the top left in the Sankey data table. And here we have categories down the left. So salary day, salary Julie, rental and dividends, and then categories along the top, home, cars, food, and savings. So the number, which is the intersection between those two items. So for example, salary Julie and cars, that number there represents the rate of the flow. So in my template, if I were to change that to uh, salary Julie, if I were to change that to 2000, and then you watch the chart, you'll see that then updates. So the amount of money that Julie spends towards cars increases significantly. And we can change any item within that grid and that will then update our chart. So that's our source data. The other thing we need is a value that represents how big the gaps are between each category. So here I have a named range and I've just called that blank. It currently says 500 and if I change that to 200, what you'll see is that the gaps between each of those categories reduces. So that's everything that is used as our kind of source data. Now let's move on to look at our first interim calculation. So here we have our first table here, and that table is called Sankey Start Pillar. And these are the numbers that are used to build the start pillars. You'll notice that in the categories on the left, I have something called Salary Dave, which is the first category, then something called Blank One, then Salary Julie, which is the second category, and then Blank Two, then Rental, and then something called Blank Three, and then Dividends. This is because we need in our chart to have the blank available within each of those items. Now the chart that we've used for that pillar is a 100% stacked column chart, which means we don't need these items to be in this order because we can change the series order later. However, to make this more understandable and easier to follow, it's better to have those items in the same order in which we want them in our stacked column chart. Within the value column, there is a consistent formula, and that is a sumifs formula, which takes the total 
from the value column of the Sankey lines table. We haven't looked at that yet, we will in a second. And there we're summing everything from the Sankey lines from column, where that is the same as the value from, from our current table. So if I scroll down here, you'll see this is our Sankey lines table, a column called from and a column called value, and it's these cells which are included within the sum if. Next we have our table for the end pillar, and this is called Sankey end pillar. And you'll notice that the categories on the left in the two column are the same as the categories we had along the top in our table. And once again, each of those is separated by a blank line. So blank one, blank two, blank three. And our sum ifs formula is exactly the same again, but instead of pointing to the from column, it's pointing to the to column. So, so far, there's nothing too tricky in there. Right, let's now move to our final interim table, which is called Sankey Lines. And it's this table where all the important calculations occur. So let's start with our from and to columns. For this technique to work, we need a unique list of every possible combination. So from our data table, we need every item from the left matched with every column across the top. So here you see we've got Salary Dave Home, Salary Dave Cars, Salary Dave Food, and Salary Dave Savings. That is then separated by a blank row, so blank one. We then have our next left category matched with each category along the top. So this means that the more lines we have within our Sankey diagram, the more lines we need in this table. There's nothing fancy with the formulas in the from and to column in this template. I've just cell linked into the relevant cells. Next, we have the value column. Now the formula in here is more complicated than it really should be. Effectively, all it's doing is returning the value from the original data table. And it's doing that through using an index match match to retrieve a single value. However, because our rows of blank one, blank two, and blank three don't exist within our source table, we've had to use an if that says that if the first five letters of the from column says blank, in that case, return the value from the named range we saw earlier, which we called blank. So our value column is either a value from the original table or it's the value of the blank. Next, we have our end position. So this helps us to know where each of our items is going to. Basic assumption is that the items are displayed in the correct order for the start, but then we need to determine which order they go to at the end. Now the numbering here works by the fact that we have 19 rows in this table and the numbering goes up to 19 and no number is used more than once. So each of them is unique, but we have to number these in the right way because we want each start point to have a line to go to each end point. So for example, here we have number one, which is Salary Dave Home. And then next, we want the next home version. So the number two would be Salary Julie Home. Number three would then be Rental Home. Number four would be Dividends Home. So we've got each of our home items as one, two, three, four. We then have the blank item, number five, and then move on to our next category. So cars would be six, seven, eight, nine, and then a blank, and then food would be the next four, and then a blank, and then savings would be the next four. So the end positions, while they may look like random numbers, they're not. They are purposefully in their order to make sure that each start point goes to each end point. And we're gonna use that in our calculations in a few seconds. Okay, now let's start moving across our calculations. So the above start calculation. So we begin with a running total on the value column. So we've got sum function, and we're summing from a Sankey lines header from the column value, and then a colon, and then the at value. So we're selecting that specific row. And by using that method of selecting the header row, and then our current row, means that we get a running total. And then from that running total, we're then minusing the value from that specific row. There are other ways to get a running total, but this method works quite well with tables. So what you'll see is that the above start value of naught, and that's because for our first line, there's nothing above it. Okay, the above mid one, we're setting this to equal the above start column. Now we need this so that we can create the relevant slopes 
on our Sankey diagram. Ideally, if area charts could have curves and slopes on them, we'd use that, but they don't, so instead we have to create our own. So we're using these interim mid values to create that for us. We've then got our above mid two column, and that's just pointing to the above end column. So above end is calculating how much space we need above our final line. And here you see the formula. So we're summing the value from the entire column and then minusing all the values where the end position is greater than or equal to. So for salary Dave, because it's at the top, we're taking the sum of the value and then taking away everything that's greater than or equal to one. So if I come down to the second row, we're still taking the sum of that value column and then we're taking away everything where the end position is greater than or equal to six. This then gives us the correct spacing for the end of our Sankey diagram. Next, we have our value start column and that is just set to equal value. As we move across any one of the individual area charts, the value always remains the same. So that gray line doesn't get bigger or smaller, it remains a constant size throughout the whole chart, which means it's the same value as we move across all of the value columns. So when we come to the below columns, it takes the total of the value column and then takes away the equivalent above or start value. So we're in below start, so it's value minus the above start cell minus the value start cell. So as I move across to the next column, you'll see it's the same thing, but rather than it being the start version, it's the mid version. And then that is the same for the other two columns as well. Finally, we have a spacing named range, which is this section here. And these four items relate to where each of the value start, mid, mid to, or value end should go. So if I move up to our chart, I'll try and demonstrate this. So if I were to change this 10 to 50, what you'd see is that you get a longer run in, so a longer flat period before it then slopes. So if I change that back to 10, there we go. So that's what that spacing is for. That spacing is to enable us to control at what point our line starts to angle. Okay, now we have the very long and boring task of creating the charts. I'll just show you one, and then unfortunately you need to repeat that for as many items as you need. So I'll select a blank cell, go insert, I want a 100% stacked area chart. Now it's easier to start with a blank chart uh, than it is to select any data within your chart because you'll only be deleting most of those elements. Anyway, for this example, I'm going to show you how to create the chart for the rental savings Sankey line. But be aware that as we go through this, you will need to do this for every line. The reason I've selected that one is because it has values in each of the three areas. So the above value and below areas. I'll right click on my chart and then go to select data and then add. In my values, I want to select the columns which represent my above columns. I'll okay that. I'll add a new series. Then I'll select the four columns that are my value columns. Okay, that. Add another series. Then I'll add my below columns. Let's get that lined up. Okay, okay, and that. Oh yes, and then we need the horizontal category axis label. So I'll click edit on that. And that's what takes us to our spacing section up there. Click OK on that and then OK again. OK, so once we've created one of these, all that's left is for us to then format this. So we don't need the chart title at all. The axis at the bottom. I'll format that axis. It's become a date axis, and then I can delete that completely. The axis on the left, let's format that. 
and I want the items in reverse order. Don't need that anymore. I'll select the value above. Set that to no fill. Set the value below to no fill. I'll then click on the value itself. And I want that to be a solid fill. A gray with a transparency of 50%. Don't want any lines. Now, because I've got a stacked area chart, I can't get to the major grid lines below. But that's okay. So go to format and select major grid lines. Press delete on that. And then we need to make the whole chart 100% transparent. So chart area, no fill. Plot area, no fill. Just through that, hover that over there. There we go. So I now have one Sankey line that I've created that represents one single line in our table. Next, we just have to go through and create one of those for each single line. So I'll delete that. And obviously, here's the one I prepared earlier. Okay, let's just talk about these pillars for a second. So these are 100% stacked column charts. So with our Sankey lines and also our pillars, both being 100% stacked charts, it means that whenever the numbers move, the lines and the pillars should remain in sync with each other. This stacked column chart is also in reverse order, so the item at the top, Salary Dave, comes first, rather than at the bottom as it normally would in a stacked column chart. I've added data labels to each of the items that require it. And that's it. That's how we create the effect of a Sankey diagram in Excel. And because we've created a Sankey line for every item, that means that even here where we have dividends and there's a zero in that cell, if that number changes, our template should be robust enough that it then updates to reflect those values. This may seem like a lot of work and it is initially, However, once you've got your template set up, it just works. So that's everything from me. That's how we create a Sankey diagram in Excel. It used reasonably simple elements, such as tables, sum ifs, stacked column charts, stacked area charts. However, by using all of them in the right way, we've been able to create this effect. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment, and I'll catch you next time.